Let's move on then to, uh, to on the horizon, uh, things that are going to be affecting us. Uh, you know, there's always something going on in the legislature most recently, is the property tax lid. Property tax lid is going to go into effect January 1st of 2018, as it is currently uh, forecast. <coughs> there's some uh, scuttlebutt that the legislature will actually move that up sooner, uh, but we'll see where that goes. In my opinion, that will be a dramatic change of how our organization, the local government, operates in the future. Uh, and I think is a real slap in the face for representative democracy. Uh, those are really strong terms, but I feel that way. Legislators decided to go ahead and usurp the authority of locally elected officials and impose their own will that they are locally elected as well. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why commissioners and city council members run for office is to go ahead and handle that very important issue about what the tax rate should be. And now taking that away, I think, is really devalues their position in the community and devalues local representation from that perspective. And that will have dramatic effects on us, from, from my point. Mind you, the legislators were able to go and put in place a sales tax uh, without any vote what, from the public whatsoever. So it seems somewhat duplicitous to me that, that county commissioners and city commissioners will have to go ahead and go to a public vote to go ahead and just reap the increase in valuation uh, in property taxes. And, and state legislators can go and increase taxes at a will without any sort of public vote whatsoever. But that's how, how the game is currently played. Let me explain the property tax lid in broad terms. What it says basically is that if we want to harvest the increased valuation in our property taxes that exceeds the consumer price index, we have to go to a public vote. There are some exemptions to that. We don't, we're not quite clear how to get those exemptions and so forth. That's the nutshell what that means. So let's say we have a booming economy and the valuation numbers are going up. We can't harvest that increased valuation. It will be a lid, if you will, on revenues. For coming in. And we'll have to adjust our revenues and our operations accordingly. We want as much money coming in. I think it will be a tremendous shift for us uh, in the community and how we provide local government services and will probably affect our expenditures uh, down the road uh, from that, that point. Now we're going to be as creative and uh, as possible to make sure that services and employees aren't impacted. Uh, we're, very, we're trying to be very good about that, uh, but that is what's on the horizon, is that possibility. This legislation, monumental legislation, changing the philosophy of local governments in Kansas would put in place literally in the last 12 hours of legislative session. And it was done as a way for it to buy off legislators' votes to buy them a vote for the sales tax increase. So legislators said, I'll vote for a sales tax increase if you get those big, bad city county folks off my back and put a property tax lid in, which doesn't affect state government whatsoever, but it affects us dramatically. Um, so that's on the horizon. And we'll see how it, how it plays out, but I think that's going, to, you know, that's going to shift local governments in Kansas dramatically. Now, mind you, uh, I'm on this terror here. Mind you that city uh, councils and county commissioners have to go ahead and go to a public vote, but the groups that they appoint do not. Case in point, they appoint the fire district members. We have four fire districts in, in, in Johnson County. None of those fire districts are subject to the property tax lid. So now you have folks that are elected by the public that are, have more restrictions than the people that they appoint as far as property taxes are concerned. That seems really ridiculous from my perspective. Uh, but that's how this, the current legislation is put together, and whether or not we can change it, I don't know. We'll see what sort of efforts come in the future. What's on the horizon? More positive stuff. Uh, we, have, we have a career expo coming up uh, at Bartle Hall, uh, the latter part of this month, uh, with the core four, basically, which is Johnson County, Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Missouri, and Jackson County coming together to go ahead and bring in thousands of uh, high school and middle school students to Barrel Hall to expose them to the world of work that local government has. Uh, one of the things we're realizing is that young people are not seeking employment for the careers we have here in our organization. Uh, it has a bad taste in their mouth, whatever. Nonprofits, yes, private business, okay, but not, not government. We're saying this can be a great career, a great place to go ahead and apply their trade, their passions, and it's not just police uh, officers and firefighters, it's a whole plethora of great jobs out there. So we're going to expose them to the world of work that way and hopefully inspire people to occupy your positions in the future as well. You know, we're all going to leave at some point, uh, including me, hopefully not for a while, although every Thursday I have my doubts. Uh, the, so, you know, but who's going to take over these positions to make sure that this organization continues going on for the next 160 years? We've got to inspire young kids to go ahead and take these on. And I really place this effort's going on. Synergistics, this is a firm that we have hired to go ahead and uh, help us improve our energy efficiency. We have done great work in this organization to go ahead and put in the mechanical systems to help re uh, save energy. When you walk by here, the automatic the lights that will turn off over time and so forth. We know that throughout the country, the biggest consumer of electricity is indeed office buildings. 
so now we've taken care of all the issues with regards to our mechanical structures and so forth. They're going to do those automatic activities. The next big opportunity is doing what? Modifying our behavior. And that's tough. So we've asked people to come in and go ahead and say, well, how, how do we use meetings efficiently? What, where do you set the certain thermostats, etc.? cetera? Uh, the case in point would be is that I wear suits typically most of the time in the summertime. I'm now being trained by Renee, and that this might, might be a bad thing. Uh, because I wear the suit, so I, need, I want to have it tuned down, turned down as temperature-wise, but she's got a, you know, an afghan <laughs> that's got to run to go make herself warm in the summertime. That doesn't make any sense to me. So we've got to modify our behavior to be appropriate. That's why I'm not wearing a jacket today, to be honest about it. Uh, let's, let's dress appropriately. Dress warm in the winter, dress cool in the summer. It'll help us save on energy. How much? We can around $500,000 or more a year in energy savings. That's being good stewards of the taxpayers' money. It also lessens our carbon footprint. It just saves energy overall. Great stuff going on. Employee performance management, we know that as we go down the path of our closer <coughs> performance and trying to create an organization that really values teamwork uh, and the idea of kind of working for our values, that our current performance management system may not be in, in, in sync with that. <coughs> Who likes our annual review process? Not many employees like the annual firing squad in some respects. Now it's much more positive than that, I hope. But we're kind of we're, we're challenging the organization to say, how do we go ahead and change our employee performance management system? to make it more of a positive conversation, and should we decouple that from compensation or make it part of compensation? Those are tough things culturally to go ahead and deal with. So we've asked our uh, set number of folks uh, throughout the organization to worry about that, think about that, study of that, and give us some recommendations of what should our employee performance management system look like to go ahead and really reinforce our pillars of performance activities and make it more of a positive experience. So we're looking at GE, for example, two weeks ago decided they're getting rid of the annual performance review process. Many large companies are looking at it now and saying it's not really a valuable way to go ahead and manage and improve people's performance and make them feel more valued in the organization. Celebrate 60th anniversary. 60 years ago this year, uh, Johnson County Park Recreation District was created. So we're having a celebration on September 20th down at, down at uh, uh, the Shawnee Mission Park. Please come down to it to go ahead and celebrate with them. It should be a great activity and great event. Uh, we would like to see if that can maybe spur into an annual event. Uh, for the county, we'll see if that does indeed morph that way, but please come down and celebrate 60 great years of Johnson County Parks Recreation. 9-11 is coming up pretty quickly uh, in terms of, of uh, that horrible event. We would indeed uh, remember that activity, and uh, the, third, uh, the third annual day of remembrance is being encouraged by employees, so think about ways you can do to kind of uh, remember people in your thoughts and prayers for that, that dramatic event. Uh, work in the Victory Garden out, out here, in the, the Wick Garden out here and back. Help donate uh, electric, uh, you know, le or recycle electric components. Uh, probably one of the more, more prominent ideas is to go ahead and bring toilet paper to work. Kind of an odd thing. Uh, but we know that food pantry, food stamps cannot be spent uh, on personal toiletries. Uh, so we're making a push to say literally bring in toilet paper to help go ahead and stock those into our food pantries for those needy populations. So think about that on 9-11 and find out ways to uh, appropriately remember that tragic event. Um, with that, yes? Oh, I have a question. I have a question? <laughs> uh, well, now we're at questions. Yeah, yeah. Jody has a question, apparently. Yeah. Well, I have a question from um, an employee that emailed it to us. Good. Uh, with the progress that we've made in, with uh, digital media and with our goals to be more eco-friendly, uh, what, what's happening with um, saving time and money by letting employees work on flex schedules, telecommuting, that sort of thing? What's the question is what's happening on uh, the flex schedules, telecommuting, and light effect we're trying to go ahead and be more, uh, I guess, uh, sensitive to the environment and that, that kind of thing. Flex schedule is certainly possible. Uh, and in fact, we have policies in place to allow that. That really is a question that needs to be addressed by your supervisor and by the department uh, directors. But several departments indeed are going to flex schedules Four-day work weeks is being being uh, look is being used right now, uh, and flex schedules working from home are being used in departments as well. So all that is possible. It's a matter, I think, of taking some initiative, talking with the supervisor, and kind of mapping out a plan to make that work. But several departments are doing it, and our policies allow it. Yes, we should do that. Where where I think that's the balance between how we serve the public and how we get the work done. Uh, but I think we've got to, as we talk about our pillars of performance, we've got to be a little more creative. There.